All right, guys, on today's episode of Oli Oli Paints, I'm gonna show you guys how to take a fender from straight out of the package, prep it, all the way to making it just look mwah, beautiful. So hang out with me for a little bit. Okay guys, hopefully you'll forgive me for this, but I accidentally hyperlapsed the prepping portion of this. Um, but basically I've got a brand new fender for a Ford Ranger, fresh out the bag, out the box, and we're gonna prep it. And it doesn't take very much to prep a new panel, but there are some kind of key things that you need to be aware of. Now I plan to seal this fender, so I'm going to use red scotch right and a single disc of three, 320 grit on my uh, six inch DA. Just keeping it super simple. I'm gonna buzz it all down. Some guys, they don't even prep this stuff. I find that the texture on these just isn't ideal. Plus I like mechanical scratch as far as like paint sticking. So I'm gonna just quickly run over it. You'll see, even in this hyperlapse, you can still see what's going on. But basically I want it to be all nice and dull. Not too many cut throughs. I cut through a little bit on the edges, but that's okay because my, my sealer is gonna, gonna cover those up anyway. But basically I'll buzz it over with that 320 grit and then I'll grab my scotch bright and I'll get anything like the cracks, the crevices, stuff like that. And I was trying to show that that's uh, part number 64659. It's one of my favorite scotch brights. Yeah, basically you just wanna get this thing nice and scuffed up inside and out. Um, it, it just makes paint stick better, man. And if you're not going to seal, which I highly recommend spraying sealer or at minimum an over-reduced epoxy, uh, that'll work as a sealer as well. Nice thing about epoxy is most of them have like a 72 hour recoat window. So you could epoxy sealer this thing and then just walk away for a little bit if you need to go do something else. And as long as you spray base coat on it in 72 hours, you'd be good. What I was trying to explain right here was that you can get all of the stuff I'm talking about, sealer, base, clear, at Eastwood, use code JOEL10 at checkout, then it'll knock off 10%. It doesn't matter what you're buying from Eastwood, it could be a welder, it could be paint, it doesn't matter, you can get it there. And you get a discount on it. Uh, but right here, I'm just using Spray Away Glass Cleaner just to clean this puppy up. Inside and out, it just gets all of that sanding dust off the surface and Honestly, a lot of guys would just go ahead and seal it at this point. Um, but I do like to wheel it into the booth and soak it with wax and grease remover and just go go the extra step and just make sure that it's super duper clean. But you never really know with these aftermarket parts. So I just use wax and grease on literally everything before I paint it. Besides plastic, it just creates a little bit too much static for me. But I also use microfiber because it leaves zero lint. And yeah, let's go ahead get you in the booth and we'll get some sealer on this. All right, so I've got a little bit of sealer mixed up. We're gonna, we're gonna do this DIY style, right? So I'm gonna use, this is the Eastwood Elite CC500. Uh, this is an HVLP gun, but it also operates pretty damn well with smaller air compressors. Um, I do have my DeVilbus digital gauge. If you guys, if you guys are gonna do a lot of painting, I'm gonna tell you right now, these DeVilbus digitals, by far the easiest gauge to use, uh, simply because, I mean, mine's got a lot of overspray on it, but you can easily replicate, right? So if you find a pressure that sprays a certain product or whatever, exactly how you want it to, it's easy to replicate versus like an analog gauge that can sometimes vary and it's not super consistent. This tends to be as consistent as anything i just i prefer digital gauges over analog but that's just me if you're curious the adapter for these pps cups is s2c for the cc500 so yeah anyway with that out of the way let's go ahead and tack reg i also got a side quest on uh yeah we ain't gonna talk about that we'll worry about this fender <laughs> anyway uh basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just use the air off the gun to tack this off we're gonna keep this all Pretty standard. Okay, get all the little bits of dust off. And now for sealer, I'm gonna spray, this is 
the the P30 I was just talking about. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this at 25 psi. Uh, just a single coat is all you need for sealer. You just need a nice even layer that's as smooth as possible for your base coat to lay down on. And I've said in the last video, the smoother you can lay sealer, the smoother the end result is. So you'll see how nice this little Eastwood does it. Um, I've got, it's basically wide open. It's wide open fan, wide open fluid, 25 PSI, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Now I'm gonna focus on uh, doing all of my edges first. If you're doing this for the first time, that's absolutely the way to start. on all our edges. I know black with black is hard to see. Okay. Biggest thing when you're you're painting something if you're new to this is your gun angle, right? So keep in mind that this fan, right? So the reason like I'll stick this in here is I just want the fan to be kind of parallel with this. So I get a nice even layer um, and as far as top to bottom bottom to top it does not matter man just do do how you're comfortable the the general thought is because the air comes in from up top and goes through the floor it's better to start at the top and at the bottom honestly I've never noticed the difference doing it either way I just kind of do what's comfortable at that point in time for me And I always keep a super tight overlap. I always see guys that kind of jump all over the place. You don't want to do that, man. You want to just keep, keep your consistency, right? You want to have a nice tight overlap. Start at one end, finish at the other type of thing. And that's it. That's one coat. That's all I need. Might need a little bit more here. So basically what I'm looking for is I just want a nice even layer and that that right there is a nice even layer it's nice and clean i don't got any chunks of nothing in it we're good there and this is going to dry just nice and matte this this eastwood gun is a lot like the iwata in terms of like how flat it lays stuff so yeah we'll we'll let this dry i'm gonna go ahead and i gotta seal that and paint that as well but i'm i'm gonna focus just on this fender um but I'll go mix up this base coat. This is UA, so it's just ebony black from Ford. Um, and once this dries for, I used US3 reducer, which is like a moderate medium reducer. So this should be pretty quick. Within five minutes, this will be dry enough to get some base coat on it. But I'm gonna just use this, the CC500 the entire way. So yeah, let's, let's make some base coat and get some base sprayed on this thing now. All right, so this is not yet ready for base coat. I've got my base mixed up. I wanted to show you guys how to tell. So take, take your gloved hand, and if it kind of imprints a little bit, it's not ready yet. I'm gonna give this probably just a couple more minutes. It's not gonna take a lot. We're right there, like, I know it's really hard to see on GoPro, but it, it's just ever so slightly still soft so we'll give it a little bit of time you can see hopefully how nice and even this fender looks there's no dust no dirt no nothing i'm hoping that this one just comes out real nice uh, with no buff because <laughs> this truck this, this truck is pretty faded and pretty messed up but i really just don't feel like polishing black because it's never fun um, but yeah we'll give this a few minutes uh, I did clean up the CC500 UA base coat. This is waterborne base. Um, if you guys are going to use solvent, I'll kind of run through how that works. Waterborne is kind of reserved for like a collision environment with heat and a downdraft like this. I would never ever suggest you guys use waterborne in a garage. You just don't have enough airflow for this to dry in a in an efficient manner. You know what I mean? It's solvent is still the way to go in that regard so all right we'll let this dry just a minute more we'll get some base coat sprayed on it we'll kind of talk about what to look for in your solvent base and your water base things like that all right so this is nice and dry now like i said take your glove finger and you're just going to rub across it we're good so 
Again, guys, I'm going to set my pressure here. Wide open, everything. We're gonna spray our base coat at 22 PSI. Um, always just start at your edges. If you're new to this, that's the best thing to do is spray all of your edges first, then worry about the face. So let's go ahead and do it. And because it's water, I'm gonna spray this decently wet. It's not gonna be like overly wet. Uh, but it is black. So there's there's one thing I want you to know about waterborne black. Because of the high carbon content in this, I do not do a wet on wet application. You, you do that, it could cause what's called bronzing. And it'll basically turn this thing into looking like mud. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna dry each coat individually. I only need two coats. That's, that'll be good and covered. Honestly, with one coat, it's probably gonna be covered. But two for safe measures, so. Anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way. Okay. And notice, if you're if you're new, you have air right here, you start pulling a little bit of pain, a little bit of pain, a lot of pain. So you could feather the trigger and get comfortable doing that in certain situations. You know, you don't have to just be full trigger all the time. I see that happen a lot. And if you're new to this, I, I, I would suggest practicing learning how to feather the trigger. Okay, so that's one coat. One other thing I want, wanted you guys to pay attention to is how I applied both my sealer and my base coat and how I go past the ends when I'm making my overlaps. The reason you wanna go past the end is because you don't wanna build up on all of your edges, right? You don't wanna have a bump there. Sometimes it happens, this is the way to avoid it. Just make sure you spray past. If this fender was on the vehicle, I'd be spraying onto the masking you know what I mean? Like past it. Just good practice. Avoids build up on edges. It's this just how you do it. So now, if this was solvent based coat, depending on what reducer you used, you could blow some air from your gun over it and you you could literally watch it flash off. This is waterboard. So I'm gonna go grab my blower. Got a little fan blower and we'll dry this. But essentially it'll kind of look like the same thing. Waterborne is also weird because like the blacks, some lines, the blacks look blue and this one, they kind of just look muddy. Um, yeah, it, it's not going to look like this once it dries. And you'll see what I mean once I actually dehydrate it. Actually, I'll just use this. <clears throat> but basically, if you've ever seen these, these are Venturi blowers. These are meant to dehydrate waterborne and essentially what happens is it sucks air blows it through it's got this little screen i always 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 take my tack rag you know, tack off the whole venturi blower just to make sure any loose dust is not just going to get blown right into that make sure this thing is turned on max and then i'll start it away from the fender and into my tack rag and then i'll open it up so all this is doing, I'm trying to blow the air across the panel because I'm trying to draw out all of that water content so I can apply my second coat. And I know it's gonna be difficult on GoPro for you guys to see what I'm talking about, but hopefully I can show you what it looks like when it starts to dry. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. Right on this edge is starting to dry and then you can kind of see how it's darker over here. It's still wet. It's not as dramatic with black, but in person you can see it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see any of that action going on or not. I promise it's happening. 
Like I said, we're only going to do two coats. If you're spraying solvent, depending on what paint line, you're going to want to check your coverage. I'll go through that as well once I get my second second coat on here. Most solvent paint lines just do three coats. Three coats of base most of the time. If it's a decent quality product, you'll be good and covered. You don't have anything to worry about, but I still want you to do this next step when it, when it comes to checking coverage. And again, notice I'm blowing this across the panel. I'm not just pointing it straight at it. I want to draw all that out so it dries faster if you go across it. All right, and that's dehydrated. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera the difference, but that's what dehydrated waterborne base looks like. Now we'll do our second coat. Uh, typically, I'm not gonna worry about the edges on a second coat. I've already went through and gave each edge a nice wet first coat. And again, that's, that's enough. That should be plenty to be good and covered. Nice tight overlap. Bring past the panel. All right, just like that. That's two coats. That's, I already know that that's covered. I don't have to do anything more than that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow this to dehydrate. I'll probably put the blower stand on it. And then I'll show you guys how to check coverage with a color light. There, there are a couple different options. Maybe I could find my Harbor Freight one and we'll use that because it's the cheapest, most effective option. Uh, but yeah, give me just a sec. We'll shut the lights off in here and we'll check and make sure our coverage is on point. Okay, so this guy right here, this is the Braun Color Match Light. Professional rechargeable color match light. You can get this at Harbor Freight, dude. This is like, I don't even know. Let me look it up. $37.99, guaranteed they go on sale all the time. 4.8 stars, they're, they're great, all right? So Harbor Freight, under 40 bucks, you can get this really nice color match light. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the lights off in the booth or you can turn the lights off in your garage, whatever the case. Come in here, turn your light on, okay? And you're gonna go through all of your edges, right? You wanna look and make sure everything is good and covered. Solid black. Now, inside this door jam, this is pretty typical. Can you see how it's a little light? Right? Not gonna worry about that. Same, same thing within here. Because from the factory, your door jams are going to be a little light. Go, I mean, if you run out to your car right now, check out your door jams with the color match light in the dark, you will see that they're, they're going to be light. So this is how you check color. This light also has two modes, a bright, a little dimmer. <laughs> it doesn't have any cool like color options. I'm gonna show you one that does though. Okay, and this is the other option. This is a Milwaukee color match light. This is probably one of my favorite ones that I've ever used. It's simple, uses an M12. Honestly, these M12s in here last forever. Uh, but this one has different color temperature modes, different brightness settings, so we'll turn it on. And it's noticeably brighter. I don't know if, yeah. And this one has different, one, two, three. So it's got three instead of two. Um, and then this has various color temps. So run through the gamma of different colors. I typically, I'll rock the 45, so right in the center when I'm color matching. Uh, but it's nice that you can, you know, change it up and different times of day, right? That's the whole idea behind changing the color temperature. This would be like late evening when the sun's starting to go down, kind of about four or five o'clock. Uh, there's about noon. Oh, there's a rainy day or under like fluorescent lights. That's really fluorescent lights. You get the idea. But these two are great options. And then if you guys are looking for, if you guys are looking for a heavy duty option, this match right, 
the dent fix one this is i've made videos on this in the past this thing is a beast watch this huge light right you can see everything crazy bright this one again has different uh let's see color light hit that you pull the trigger that's what it is pull the trigger and you can cycle through all the different shades yeah it's also got a little uv which is funny hit set it's got a little uv light not that this is going to do this isn't going to cure primers or anything this is for checking for leaks which i find kind of hilarious maybe it would cure some like clear uv it probably would but uh yeah i just thought that was kind of funny uh but anyway that's three color light options guys so like i said we are ready for clear coat now again i cleaned this gun uh we're gonna set it up just a little bit higher psi this go around instead of the i did my sealer at 25 my base coat at about 22 i'm gonna spray clear coat at 28 um a little bit more pressure just atomizes a little bit more you'll see how nice this thing sprays clear um but yeah 28 psi wide open fan wide open fluid again eastwood cc 500 um you guys can use that discount code that joel 10 at eastwood did i mean it knocks 10 percent off anything so you can use it on spray guns paint welders whatever doesn't matter you'll get a discount on it all right so again tight overlap i'm going to do all of my edges first um and just like base coat and sealer i'm only going to do one coat on every edge so the inside i'm only going to do one coat uh, the inside of that i'm going to do one coat and we'll just we'll get this knocked out all right hopefully you guys are learning something oh gosh uh, but yeah, I mean, th these videos are a lot of fun. I just kind of ramble, <laughs> kind of ramble and tell you, try to give you something valuable while I'm getting work done, you know? <clears throat> I remember the first time I sprayed this thing, it was with just spraying clear and it impressed the hell out of me. It does everything pretty dang well. It's reasonably affordable. I think these are like $300 or something like that. They're not cheap, but they're not built super cheap. So it's, you're getting your money worth out of it. There we go. One coat. That flow a little bit. I'm going to give this about five minutes. Then we'll do our second coat and I'll slow down on that second coat. This one I moved kind of quick. I mean, there's a little bit of texture in it. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna fix all that on the second coat. Um, this is a Ford product, so I do need to leave a little bit of texture in it, uh, but not, not what you're currently seeing. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got, it's got a little bit of orange peel in it. That's all right. Basically the way that you can fix that is uh i'm not gonna change literally anything on the gun i'm gonna leave it same setting same wide open wide open 28 i'm gonna just back up slightly tighter overlap and just really let it all melt together right so that first coat i usually spray exactly like that pretty dang quick and i just keep it moving and then the second coat that's where i really worry about how it's going to look so yeah i'll turn you guys on once this is tacked up and we're ready for round two okay so that that has been about five minutes we're gonna go ahead and do our second coat it's already flowed out a lot more yeah that's looking real real good so yeah we'll check our pressure right at 28 sure vent is open and i'm gonna slow down on this one
go. Now this is going to flow just a wee bit more. Um, and if you're worried, say you're worried about stuff running. The nice thing too about these 3M stands is I can just tip it back just a scope. Go until that one. Tips it up just a little bit just to keep it kind of locked in, but yeah, there's our second coat. We go take all this stuff off and we'll have a look at this good and proper. All right, so here's up close and personal on this fender. Came out wonderful. All right, let me know if you guys like this kind of video in the comment section from all the way from getting it out of the bag to in the booth, final painted, looking nice and glossy. So um, as always guys, all of the links to stuff down in the description. Uh, code Joel10 at Eastwood. Knocks 10% off if you're interested in that spray gun. Um, and yeah, I'll just see you on social media. I'll see you on the next video and adios.